Alright, so in this tutorial we're going to be talking about the Rocky Mountain Fractal and there's not a lot of tutorials about that that are necessarily free and so um, I'm just going to put together a quick tutorial for anybody who has any questions about the Rocky Mountain Fractal and doesn't know how to use it very well or even integrate it into scenes very well. So um, you always want to keep things to a real life scale and view and the Rocky Mountain Fractal takes advantage of that, of that uh, pretty much all the time. So what we're going to do is just open up a procedural terrain and I already have one opened here with a Rocky Mountain already made using our Rocky Mountain Fractal. Um, using it anyways so if I can say it so this is pretty much what I came up with right here and um, uh, and this is a pretty standard looking Rocky Mountain terrain uh, it only took me about uh, I'd say about five minutes to make and that's because I was just very going back and forth on different things so uh, open up uh, the function editor and you'll just have the whatever you have your scene set up as you'll just come up with whatever you have but you what you want to do is depending on your knowledge of view I deleted the vector seed and the multiplication node that they had there and then I just loaded the Rocky Mountain Fractal over the preset that they have in there and what I did is I raised the gain all the way to 10 so I brought the Rocky Mountain Fractal up all the way as far as I can get it um, I can go higher if I wanted by typing in a number there but I don't so I uh, will just keep it like that at 10 for now and then um, I just I lowered the meta scale all the way. If you didn't have it lowered, um, that's what I did, and I came out with a pretty good result. And I just raised the largest feature slightly, not even a lot. And I took the base roughness down, and I think I might turn it up a little bit more for this terrain. Uh, that way, I get a little more detail in there. Um, and then also one of the things that people look over. Um, the people who really don't know how to use Rocky Mountain Fractal or anything like that but look over the number of iterations because they get scared of seeing oh slow nine highest number slow so this must mean that at five I'm okay six I'm pushing it seven if I don't have a good computer I'm screwed eight I don't want to do it and nine is just totally ridiculous well um, well if you go to five you'll see what I have here the iterations are basically quality based um, numbers so at five we have a pretty decent looking Rocky Mountain terrain um, but if we uh, let's take the subdivision quality down to more normal so this will be a little bit quicker and uh, if we raise the resolution up a little bit to just say 512 uh, this is what we have and this is just that 512 and you can see all these open areas that are kind of barren and um, they kind of look little like they're chipped in and everything like that uh, and you know that's that's some good detail there but uh, if we raise this to six, and that's not that's just a one-step push. I mean, it's not hardly doing anything, and it's still a pretty quick uh, change. And uh, you obviously wouldn't be using view if you had a weak system to begin with. So, and now you can see all these other more details that come in, and it doesn't look like it's so chipped. Uh, and it's not as in some areas it's smooth just because Rocky Mountains do have those smooth areas. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but they do have those and um, then there, some areas are now filled in, they're not so smooth. Well, seven, seven is, is, is still a pretty good number, and it does take a little bit longer to uh, render the mesh than six does, but you get um, more detail, and you might not have changed that or saw that immediately, but that's just because the mesh can only handle so much detail. Um, you would raise the resolution to see something different, but you wouldn't necessarily see the detail change, until you rendered out the mesh into the camera view and then rendered a final view or a final image. So um, there is a lot more detail in there now than there was when I had it at um, six or even five. And I would recommend staying between six, seven, and eight. Uh, nine, if your computer can handle it, definitely go to, for it because it's not, it's not that big of a deal, I would say. My computer can handle it just fine and I don't even have a very um, strong computer. so. Um, sometimes it jitters a little bit, but um, I think that's just because my processor can't handle it. So um, I'm just going to stay at 7. And the subdivision quality, if you see these areas right here, like right in this area, how it just kind of stops and goes straight up, um, those are the polygons, and they can't, these polygons right here can't really be um, changed into this existing terrain piece right here. Um, they have to be subdivided. To get that quality in there and if you if I switch the high 
from normal. It's, it's going to take a little bit longer. I mean, we are adding more quality and then subdividing those pixels. And you can see how they go away in the areas that where that happened at. And uh, you can get some more quality. And then there are some still some issues right here where it kind of stops and goes up, but it's not as noticeable. And that's where you'd go up to maybe ultra and um, fix out those issues. But you usually wouldn't raise the iterations or the subdivision quality until you got what you want um, in the live view right here. And also before you probably do a final render just to see how your train looks. So, and you know, this is, isn't a bad looking terrain, but it's not the best looking Rocky Mountain terrain either. And I only spent so much time making it, so um, just for uh, the tutorial purposes. So um, the next thing you want to do is, after you set this all up the way you want it, go and play with the scale factor and the flat level. And what I've noticed is that the flat level and the ground level are pretty much the same almost. If you slide the flat level over to the left, the terrain gets kind of it gets bigger. Uh, gets more blown out and same thing with the ground level it kind of gets bigger and if you raise it to the right um, it goes down so if I say I raise it a little bit like that and then we'll just load the terrain mesh up and it'll take a little bit because I didn't change these settings but you can see how it went down just slightly um, and then if we raise the ground level you'll see how it just goes down very slightly because that's how much I moved it was just slightly so and then it goes down so um, that's what uh, those two features do um, and just a short description they probably do something else and I'm just not entirely sure what they are but that's just what I've noticed so and if anybody can you know tell me exactly what they do then of course go ahead and you know put in the comments or whatever it's just so everybody's, you know, everybody's clarified on that. And I changed it a little bit by raising the scale factor. And I noticed that the scale factor either stretches and blows out the terrain mesh a little bit more, um, adds a little bit more detail and when you raise it to the right. And when you lower it to the left, it loses a little bit more detail and it's not as blown out and everything like that. So uh, that's something that you would probably want to um, play with. And it probably raises... Um, like these cutoffs right here makes the ends a little bit more steep. It's probably what it would do too. So um, you play with that till you get something you want. And I'm just going to lower it. Let's see what we get here. It'll just take a minute for it to load the mesh. And yeah, it just kind of makes it so they're not so steep on the slopes here. Those edges aren't as steep, but I think that's what they do. So I'm just going to raise that just a little bit more, just so we have a little more, the slopes there are a little bit more steep. Kind of reminds me like more rocks are coming out, maybe at the top. All right, so that looks good. And then the next thing you want to uh, start playing with, everything here is pretty much the same. You can add some distortion and, you know, nature has a, bit, a little bit of natural distortion. So maybe raising that a little bit will give your uh, terrain a little bit more life. And while that's loading, um, the rock correlation here, uh, it gives you iterations uh, one through five, and holy crazy, that kind of distorted it way too much. Um, it gives you iterations one through five, and or two through five, I believe. And what it does is it adds some extra rocks that you would see on Rocky Mountains, how they kind of come out of the uh, the mountainside, uh, that's what they do. So if I change this to um, two, and if you look right here, there's some rocks right there that I added. Those will probably shift somewhere in a little more bunched group. See, they're not there anymore. And depending on where they are, I can't really see them too well. Um, but they're in there somewhere. But um, play with the roughness and the height a little bit, and I might be able to find them. Um, and I noticed that um, iteration two, they're kind of more clumped together. And the more you go up, the more they kind of spread out throughout the entire terrain. Uh, they're not necessarily quality based. The higher you get, the more quality there is. It just depends on whether there's more or less at certain intervals of the mountain. So they might appear more at the top or they might appear more at the bottom. Obviously five appears at the top a little bit up here, uh, probably where the 
fifth iteration into the fractal comes in. So um, I typically stick between three and four because I've noticed that's where the best um, detail comes in at. You don't get these harsh spikes. Um, and some Rocky Mountains do have those spikes, but um, the one I want to create doesn't, so. All right, and then you just play with the height and the roughness and you get different, 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 um, different results every time. So sorry, I had a brain fart there. All right, and I'm just going to lower the roughness a little bit. And you can see how fast it is to get something completely different in the Rocky Mountain terrain. Um, obviously, I only made a few slight adjustments and I got something completely different. So uh, depending on what you want, you might want to be um, kind of constantly looking over here to see what you're getting. And right now, I'm, I'm not... I like this, but I mean, I would probably play with it a little bit more to get something different. But just for time's sakes, I'll keep that. Let's lower the resolution. So I don't really care about it and we'll just hit OK and then I'll hit OK again and I already have this terrain scaled to um, the, the height and everything that I'd like it to be at um, what I have it set at is um, three kilometers so uh, that's some you might want to bring the Rocky Mountain fractal into real world uh, real world scaling and obviously a Rocky Mountain isn't going to be 256 meters or whatever the, uh, the preset is on most of them, so, or whatever it is as a preset. And, um, you know, you could add some plants and rocks and stuff into here and get something completely cool, and obviously you can add a, a material to it. And, you know, there's some, um, there are some pretty cool things you can use, like the landscapes. This one... The snowy scrubland works pretty good, or you can mix in the uh, gray mountain rocks, which I know works pretty well. Um, you can put that in and then mix it with snow. Say just, you know, snow. Rocky Mountains usually have snow on them. Sometimes, at least where I live anyways. And then you can distribute them so, you know, they get separated, and then you just kind of have the snow appear at high altitudes. Make that strong, a little bit stronger. And then you can make it appear on flat surfaces and you make that a little bit stronger. And then you just lower it towards the first material and you'll get a pretty even um, difference between the two. And then play with the snow a little bit more. So you go to the snow and bring up the highlights because snow is kind of bright and it's kind of shiny. So it's probably more bright than shiny, but you might want to bring the shininess up a little bit more. And um, Go ahead and do a quick preview render of it. And of course, the higher the iterations you have, and depending on the atmosphere you have, the longer it's going to take to render. So uh, be careful on your um, choice of detail. You'd probably want to do all the quality boosting right before you do a final rendering, just like um, any good practice in view would be. And given a little bit more time, this terrain could be something completely magnificent if it want if I wanted it to be. Um, right now, I'd say this looks pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and close that, and then come back into the terrain editor and edit the function. And I'm just going to change the iterations to either eight or nine, just to get that little list, last bit of detail I'd like into it. Uh, seven's a pretty good set, so you won't have to worry too much about it. Uh, depending on if you need more detail or not, and I think this needs a little bit more detail, so I'm just going to bring it into 8. And we'll do another quality, or preview quality render. And obviously this is going to take a little bit longer than the last one, because we have a little bit more quality in it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have saved the last image that we had, so we can compare it to this one. But I pretty much remember what it looks like, so... So good, and I can see a little more detail over here and up here. So, I mean, this is looking good for just a pretty quick, you know, this is what you do and this is how you do it kind of thing, and this is what this means. So, um, if you have any questions, go ahead and give me um, a mess, send me a message. You can leave it in the comments if you'd like.
uh, you can subscribe if you want. Also, um, you can send in requests if you want to learn something. I might know it, and if I don't, I'll just tell you flat out I don't know it, but I'll go and research it too because it'll just be more learning experience for me. Uh, so thank you, and um, have, a, uh, have a nice time creating those environments. Bye.